this issue, people like to say that it's a complicated issue, and I don't actually think it is. I think it's very simple. It all boils down to, do you actually think that trans women and intersex women are real women and are really female mm -hmm. or not? And if you do, it's very simple. Just stop policing who counts as a real woman because this has had history of racism built into it over the years. It's not an accident that the intersex athletes who get singled out are women of color from the global south because who gets singled out for scrutiny is based on white women's conceptions of femininity. And that's being weaponized against trans people too. So it's a fear of protecting the fragile, weak, cis, white woman from the rest of us. So, so <laughs> there are many elements to what you said, which I appreciate. So let, let's try to break them down. One thing that confuses me personally is it, it, it seems like we have discussions about who should participate in which category and how. You know, on the face of it, it seems simple as you say. You know, if somebody identifies as a woman, if they're transgender, they can compete against women who were born biologically, and, and then if not, then not. But then there are many who would argue who are not transphobes. There are many who, who are born biologically women who will say, but you have an unnatural advantage over me, and that makes the sport unfair. How do, you, how do you respond to that? Yeah, there's lots of ways you can respond to that. So the first is the, the very language of you were born and I'm not biological somehow. Like, I don't think I'm a cyborg. So like this idea that like, oh, you're not a biological woman. Well, I am a woman, that's a fact. I am female, so all my identity records, my racing license, my medical records all say female, mm -hmm. right? And I'm pretty sure I made a biological stop. So I'm a biological female mm -hmm. as well. So this question of do trans women have an advantage over cis women? We don't know. Um, in fact, there's basically no published research on this question. However, uh, there's good reason to think that there isn't, but I think it's irrelevant because we allow all kinds of competitive advantages within women's sport. So one example I'd love to talk about is the 2016 Rio Olympic women's high jump final. First place was over six foot three, tenth place was five foot five. So a 10 and a half inch height difference between first and 10th at the Olympics okay. in high jump. Right. And we call that fair. Okay. So the range of body types within the female category is way, way bigger than anything that could be attributed to trans women. Uh -huh. So if there's an advantage, and I'm not saying that there is for trans women in women's sport, it's not an unfair advantage. But also we've been competing at trying to compete at the highest level for decades. We've been allowed to compete for decades. And no one has won an elite world championship. No one has won an Olympic gold medal. This Tokyo Olympics was the first time trans women even qualified for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So this idea that trans women are suddenly gonna take over women's sport is an irrational fear of trans women, which is the dictionary definition of transphobia. So uh, it's interesting that you say that, you know, because it's interesting that you say that because I think if, if I were to push back or, you know, even not even playing devil's advocates, uh, there, were, there are a few things that could be argued. Number one, you could argue that although the trans woman who competed in the Olympics didn't dominate, she did beat a field of women who might have qualified for that position, right? Um, secondly, when you talk about the height differences, I, I agree with this completely, but there, there are many who would argue that we exist in a state where a lot of the surgeries are new, a lot of the technology, just the technology is new. Transgenderism is not new. We know it throughout time, we've seen it throughout history. But there are many who would say, how do we ensure that we are creating some sort of standard? And the reason, the reason we talk to this, is, you know, we talk about this is, it's the reason they have to regulate, uh, regulate uh, performance enhancing drugs. For instance, what is fair? What can you drink? What can you not drink? What can you consume? What can you not consume? Um, some would say, if you are born that way, that's how sport has determined who goes where. And then some would say, no, who, regardless of who you are, you should be able to compete. My question then comes in from a really, honestly, a different place. I look at somebody like Oscar Pistorius from South Africa, right? He was the double amputee. Yep. And Oscar Pistorius actually went, well, I want to compete in the able-bodied race, mm -hmm. right? And people were like, well, do you have an advantage? Do you not, et cetera, et cetera, because of the prosthetics. But 
then could there not be an argument if there is no advantage in that, that then trans women should be able to compete but in the men's races then, because they'd still be able to compete in the sport. But they're women and they're female. So like I said, this boils down to, are trans women really women? Are they really female? Because if you think yes, then we belong competing with other women. So 